Hello and welcome to Having Coffee with Smog. Today we are looking at the hot topic of picking the right language to learn in 2020. It doesn't really matter if you are a hardened pro or just a beginner. If you don't follow the latest technology trends, you will get stuck with legacy projects that are hard to maintain and develop. This is especially important when you're starting to code. The first languages that you will learn will shape how you approach programming problems in future. According to multiple sources, in 2018, the Python was the most popular language. Year before that, it was C, and in 2016, Go held the title of the language of the year. What will happen this year? Nobody knows for sure, but one thing is certain. Correctly predicting the hot tech of the year will open many doors for those who prepare. It is obvious that there are hundreds and hundreds of languages to learn, so we need to draw a line somewhere. How was this list made? Well, our specialists took a long hard look at multiple sources to pick the right candidate for the top language. Stack Overflow yearly survey, job offers from Stack, Glassdoor and LinkedIn, also famous TOB index and the state of the GitHub Octoverse, and the general trends in tech portals related to coding. From there, only 15 the most popular languages made to this final round, and we'll pick from there today. All right, so let's meet our contenders. We have Assembly, all of the shell languages like Shell, Bash, and PowerShell. We have C, C Sharp, C++, Go, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby, SQL, uh, Swift, and TypeScript. So quite an extensive list. If you're sorry that your language didn't make the cut, drop a comment. I'll be sure to include the most popular ones in the next rating. All right, how are we going to do this? We must use scientific method to gauge which language is going to matter the most in 2020. So, we'll use following criteria where score depends on the sources mentioned before. We have job offers, based on the current availability of positions for this language. Sentiment, how language is perceived. Is it loved or dreaded by the market? And we have salaries, based on average salary for developers working with this tech. Popularity, how often the language is queried in search engines, how many repositories in GitHub are using it. On top of that, each language can get up to the three bonus points based on the following factors. Easy to learn, cross-tech usability, and available frameworks and libraries. Depending how well these languages perform in those three criteria, they can get a point or not. Be aware that bonus points are totally my own opinion, so yeah, treat this with a little bit of grain of salt. Okay, let's go! First up is assembly, language used to program chips and CPUs directly. It is as low level as it gets. With growing market for IoT devices, this could be a really valuable skill to have. Let's look at the data. It's kind of dreaded language, to be frank, and it's not really very popular. No points for jobs, no points for sentiment, but one point for salary, and no points for popularity. Sorry, Assembly is really out of luck here, because it's not really easy, not really cross-tech, or doesn't have a lot of frameworks or libraries. Cool. <laughs> Next up, Bash, Shell, PowerShell shell scripting languages. Should you learn one of those to master DevOps slash sysadmin tooling and automate manual tasks from the command line? Let's have a look. I would say that it is quite popular, actually 36% in the Stack Overflow survey. So two points for jobs, no points for sentiment and two points for salaries. Nothing in popularity. And I'll give one bonus point for easy to learn because shell scripting isn't actually that difficult. Okay, let's move on. C. C is old, ancient by today's standards, but it's very powerful and will get you to the door of the companies that work with IoT or embedded devices. 57% responded that they don't like C. Wow. TIOB index, quite high, 16%. So that gives us one point in jobs, no points in sentiments. Those kind of cancel out. One point in salaries and one point in popularity. And to be fair, C is kind of cross tech. So one point in here and one point in frameworks and libraries. C sharp. 
Ah uh, yes, used to be locked to Windows platform, but right now it's available on mobile, Linux and others thanks to Xamarin and .NET Core. Very cool. It's quite loved. 67% of survey and takers responded that they like it. It holds fifth place on the Octoverse. That's quite high. So the scoring. Jobs, two points. Sentiment, two points. One point in salaries and in popularity. We'll give one point for Crosstech. It's available on multiple platforms. And one point in frameworks and libraries because NuGet, uh, yeah, it, there's a lot of things available there. Bam, bam, bam. C++, one of my personal favorites. It's great to learn how everything works in software development and achieve very little overhead over the machine code itself. So you kind of pay for what you get. And there is quite a lot of repositories on GitHub that are written in C++. Sixth place. Well, one point for jobs, no points for sentiment, sorry, and one point in salaries and one point in popularity. That's more or less good. And I'll give two more points, one from Costec, you can compile a C++ code almost everywhere, and one point for frameworks or libraries, Go. So Go is Google's invention. It compiles to machine code. However, it contains garbage collector and it's optimized for multi-threaded application and contains runtime reflection. 15% of respondents in the survey replied that they want to learn it. There is a huge incentive to learn Go. It's called salary. 80 grand a year is the average salary for the Go developer. Wow, wow, wow. Points in jobs, no points. However, two points for sentiment and three points for salary and no points in popularity. Also no bonus points for this one. Okay, let's move on to Java. So Java runs on Java Virtual Machine and it's highly cross-platform. It's a proper object-oriented language with type checking and all of the bells and whistles. Java is one of the most popular languages, 41%. TOB index, 1725. Third place in the GitHub repositories. That many, that many projects are written in Java. Interesting, very cool information to have. Three points in jobs, three points in jobs. No sentiment points. One point in salaries, not that great. And three points in popularity. I'll give a point for Crosstech because it's available on many, many platforms and a point in frameworks and libraries. JavaScript is the next one. It runs on browsers and recently with Node.js on servers as well. So it's a great choice if you want to learn one thing and have all of the bases covered. 67% of people responded that they use JavaScript. It's the most popular language we have. First place in numbers of repositories using GitHub. In terms of points, three points for jobs, two points for sentiment and one point in salaries. Popularity, two points because yeah, every browser uses JavaScript and I'll give a bonus point in every section. PHP. PHP is a popular language for web servers and it has some bad press due to poorly written web applications. It's the least paid language of the 15 that we have. Only 43k a year is the average salary for PHP developer. Not that much I have to say. So how do we score on this one? Jobs, two points. Sentiment, no points. No points in salaries and only one point in popularity. But I will give one bonus point in easy to learn. Moving on to Python. Python is easy to learn and it can be very powerful. 73% love the Python language. It's the most wanted language to learn. 26% of people want to learn Python. Second place in terms of repositories that are using Python in their code. That's also very impressive. So we have a lot of points here, a lot of points. Three points for jobs, three points for sentiment, one point for salaries and two points in popularity. And to be frank, Python deserves all three bonus points. Ruby is another scripting language used with Rails framework for efficient and quick web development for high traffic. How are we doing on our survey? Only 8% of people use Ruby, not that many. However, However, it's one of the most paid languages, 75k a year It's the average salary for Ruby developer. Okay, how does this score? In jobs, no points. No points in sentiments, two points in salaries and no points in popularity. However, as a scripting language, it's an easy to learn language, one bonus point here. SQL. 
is a functional language used in relational databases. Not really a proper language that allows you to build standalone solutions, but most likely you'll have to learn it anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at the data for SQL. 54% of people use it. Cool, how does that turn into a scoring? 3, 2, 1, 0, that's the scoring. And I'll give it one point to uh, easy to learn, because yeah, it's not that hard to get the basics of it. Swift, it's another popular language used for Apple development. Definitely a strong contender for Apple fans. Only 7% of people use Swift, not that many. 69% love it, 31% hate it, and 6% of people want to learn it. So that's a good sentiment. So, no points in jobs, 2 points in sentiment, 1 point in salaries, and no points in popularity. No bonus points for Swift. TypeScript. TypeScript is roughly JavaScript with types. It's available for Node and also can be transpiled to JavaScript for browsers. 73% people love it, 27% people hate it. It's second to the best score, I have to say. Only Python tops that. In terms of scoring, one point in jobs, two point in sentiment, one point in salaries, and no points in popularity. Okay, and I'll give one point in cross-tech. I guess that's, that's kind of fair. All right, so let's sum up the points and see where we are at. <laughs> so it's a perfect time to have a little survey. Click up here and vote for the language that you think should be the language to learn in 2020. Boom. And we'll take a quick break to thank our sponsors. Uh, no, wait. We don't have any sponsors. Okay, moving on. Congratulations goes to Python. It is the most loved and most popular and frankly, one of the best languages to learn right now if you're thinking about going into software developing. It's quite well paid. It has a lot of support, has a lot of good features. Only downside of Python is the scriptness of it, right? You're not really able to compile it and ship it as a standalone application. You need to include the entire environment with it. And some devices are just not powerful enough to have Python on it. Second up is JavaScript. Of course, JavaScript is quite popular language. And unless you're deeply interested in backend only, no full stack, no front end at all, you need to learn JavaScript. And from the family of strongly typed languages, Java holds the proud third place. You can kind of expect that, right? Java is the third. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you can now select the language that you need, that you will learn. And yeah, I wish you all the best and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.